Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to create a 3D glitch effect using Touch Designer and then make it auto-reactive. The effect can adapt to different audio inputs and the visual will also look different when you apply different textures, uh, either it be images or videos and then you can play around to see which medium suits you best. Like always, I will show you the final effects first and then explain the network. Now let's understand the network. For network, I'm structured it into three parts. The audio part, the 3D object part, and the post-rendering of the 3D object. Starting with the audio part, I typically use the audio analysis component for almost all my visual projects. I would say 95% of the time is enough. Uh, I tend to not to build too complex stuff. I focus more time to think about what kind of effects I want to achieve and how to achieve it. I also think when you work with clients, you don't necessarily need to detect all those things by yourself. Uh, oftentimes, clients will give you the terms to work with, and you just need to think about the creative vision and the visual aspects of it. And if you are a producer or a DJ yourself, then you already have all those parts. Uh, so I will just show you the how to make the visuals. The audio analysis part gets you specific aspects of the song like mid, low, high, kick, snare. Another more important part of the audio reactive visual is how do you recalculate and remap that value to be useful for your visuals. And later I'm going to show you the common operators I use uh, to change the audio values. Um, in, in my case here, I connect the high to a mass and then add a limit, then end up with a null. And for the kick, I add to a, a lag and then connect it to a null. Uh, the common operators I often use example, are noise, pattern, and LFO, also mass, lag, filter, and limit. These are two sets of operators. These three generate values for you, so you can use it to drive some base movement of the visuals. And these four are used to uh, remap or recalculate the values it gets from audio analysis. So in this case, I just duplicate here to show you how it looks like. So we connect our high to all of our four inputs. And then we can add a trail to see it more clearly. Um, we'll connect the first two. Start with the first one, the mass chop allows you to remap the values to fit your needs. For example, if you want to standardize the value input um, from whatever range to 0 to 1, you can use mass for this. After you standardize the range from 0 to 1, you can also use mass to scale. So for example, to a specific value uh, from 0 to 1 to 0 to 10, or 3 to 5, uh, whatever range fits your visual needs. And then for lag, um, it adds delay to your visuals so that the visual look more natural to your music. Um, you can see what it looks like with the fill shot. The lag is similar to easing and ease out of different kinds of animation curves. From my experience, not all songs need a lag. It depends on the tempo and energy of the song and your creative vision of it. And normally for faster songs with high BPM, I tend not to use a lag. Since it's already uh, quick and if you add a lag there, I find the visuals to look uh, sluggish or disconnected. Even 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 is too big of a uh, lag for my taste. But again, uh, based on the piece, you might want to use a lag to get a more natural feeling uh, animation. And for the filter, so you can see the filter smooths out our original input. Uh, it doesn't lose any value, it just averages them. It will give you a more smooth value and continuously look. 
and then for the limit uh, for the limit you can use it to clean the values to a specific range or use it to filter out some of the values for example use the different types here limit it to a specific range you can also use the quantize quantize here if you apply value step of 0.2 instead of getting the whole range of the values you will lose some of them and you will get the jumps in the values for example if i put 0.2 i will get values multiplied by 0.2 and in this case we see maybe i remove these two I'll just see the original and this one it will add jumps and jacked filling to our visuals and whereas filter it just smooths out the, the visuals. For the 3D object, we want to create a sphere that zooms in and out with the music. You can see how it looks. And then how to create this is that we need to use a sweep sop. Uh, the sweep sop allows you to create a 3D object easily by taking two inputs. The first is the 2D profile and the second is the path or the backbone of your 3D object. So in my case, I'm using a circle as my base and I'm using a line to move my circles around to create this sphere. To create the moving line, I use a noise to generate three channels of random numbers, only used one channel here. And then I turn the random numbers to points with the add sop and then add to a trail so that it connects, uh, convert our points to a line. Uh, you see my circle is in the Z X plane and it moves along the Y. Uh, so we get this here. And to render the 3D object, we need uh, a camera, a render, and a constant for the texture. For the texture, you can either use a picture or a video. And for this, uh, in fact, I would say the video will give you a more dynamic You can look. also add that dynamic to your image by adding a ramp here and animate the image. For the ramp here, you want to add expression, apps time, uh, seconds. Uh, you can slow it down by dividing it by 10. So you will have this uh, slow moving filter to your image. After the texture, let's move the camera. To move a camera, you need to do three things. The first is define the camera path. Where should our camera move? Second is move our camera along the path with the help of chop operators. And then finally, control where our camera looks at the camera angle. And then click the camera panel. You can see uh, I'm using the pass chop the reference of our circle here to, to the path and use the chop to drive the position and use the null to drive the angle and what the null does is make your camera always look at the geometry you can get the null from the component here okay it's an empty thing and if you chop it in the look at you will always make your camera look at the geometry for you to see it more clearly you click the split panel and then uh, in the second one you click geometry viewer so you can see the camera view and this purple pass is our camera pass to see the uh, pass you need to open the template here you should be able to see the camera alongside the path. For some reason, my camera is hidden. If you know the answer, please let me know. It would be very helpful. You should see yours along the path. When you move the position here, you should see your camera moves along with this path. And then the angle uh, of your camera is always looking at the geometry. If you put a uh, now there. All right, um, I use a circle, you can use other things. Get creative here to think about how you want to move along your camera inside this geometry or other geometry. And finally, the post-processing part, just simply connect it to a transform and use the, use the height to enlarge the, the visuals and then connect it to a feedback loop. For the feedback, connect it to a level and use the 
kick to drive the opacity and for the transform I enlarge the visuals a little bit so you will get this trading looks trailing looks um, yeah. and then um, in the end I use a combine uh, or over you drag on to the feedback that's pretty much it. Hope you found it useful and see you next time.